Hey Splashers, the beekeeper delivers everything that you would expect from a Jason Statham movie with a little bit of a twist. He ends up being a beekeeper and he lives next door to this woman named Eloise and he says that no one's ever taken good care of him ever in his life. He's very grateful for having this woman as a friend. Moral of the story for the bad guys is never mess with the elderly and definitely don't mess with the elderly that are connected with Jason Statham because you already know how that's going to end. He's going to beat up people, he's going to kill people, he's going to destroy things, going to blow things up, he's going to do everything in his power to protect the people that he cares about. Let's dive into this. He ends up being a beekeeper of all people, which is something different than we usually see from Jason Statham. This beekeeper actually is a special forces agent, so it's not that different than his normal characters. And from here, the older lady played by Felicia Rashad, she ends up getting scammed the same way that your mother could get scammed, your grandmother could get scammed, any older person that you know, or someone that's just naive and doesn't understand things when it comes to technology and how they can be taken advantage of. So Felicia Rashad, Eloise, ends up being scammed because there's an alert that pops up on her screen that says, hey, your computer is compromised. So now she's all panicky trying to figure out how to fix the computer. And guess what? There's this company that sent out those phishing messages to be able to scam people when they call the 800 number, and that's called United Data Group. So when they call into this center to get help with their computer and fix it, they accidentally end up giving these people access to hack into their computer, take all of their funds. So they access all their bank accounts, deplete them dry. And in this case, Eloise actually had her personal bank account, her 401k account. She also had access to a $2 million bank account that was for a charity company that she was the director of. They wiped out her entire worth. All of her money is gone. In doing this, this caused her great despair and now she ends up killing herself because she doesn't know how to handle the situation. Her daughter ends up arriving at the house and her daughter actually works for the FBI and she comes and finds her mother shot dead with a bullet in the side of her head. Now, Jason Statham, the beekeeper, also known as Clay, ends up walking into the house and he sees her dead and he's trying to figure out what happened. Her daughter doesn't know who he is. Now she's on alert and wants to put him in jail thinking that he's the one that possibly killed her. He goes down to the precinct. They check him out, see that there's no fingerprints from him on the gun. She ends up apologizing and now she's looking for his help. He's looking at her trying to figure out information that they could find. Back to the beekeeper part. You know that he is a secret forces agent. So he's obviously going to be kicking a lot of behind, causing a lot of violence and destruction, but he's also retired and has the connection back at the beekeeper beehive. He contacts this connection to figure out what happened, how he can eliminate this problem. He calls, finds out information as to this United Data Group. With this information, he ends up driving over there with two big red gas cans with the intentions of destroying the building, setting it on fire. He gets there, he starts whooping behind, beating up the security at the front gate, gets through, goes to the desk girl and tells her, hey, I'm going to be blowing up this whole building, so if there's any other people in this building that are not with United Data Group that you want to let out, go ahead and tell them to get out now because the building's going up in flames. Gotta love Jason Statham because you always just know he's going to come in there with that gruff personality, super cool, calm, and collective, and he's just going to tear stuff up. I can't complain about that. I love it. It's one of the things that I always liked Jason Statham for. Transporter was one of my favorites, and I constantly watch his movies. But I will say this. This was one of his better movies in the past few years from the previous movies that I've watched, like The Expendables, plus whatever other movies that he kind of threw out there. This one actually keeps you engaged, and for me, it was very exciting because the fact that he's fighting against millennials. So he's fighting against people that are in my age bracket that are trying to do NFTs, Bitcoin, and just all the new technology things that help millennials gain generational wealth. But the part about these ones were is that they were scamming and phishing people's information. So they weren't really gaining the wealth properly. So now when he arrives at the UDG building, once he gets past the front desk girl, he ends up going to the UDG floor. He sees it has neon lights. It looks like a club, not really just a regular run of the mill call center. Everybody has the nice computers. They got their headsets on. They're in there cheering for for each other every time they're stealing money from these older people. And it's crazy because you got this young guy dressed nice, nice suit. He's in there complimenting everybody, showing them how to pull off the scams. So he's on the phone live, broadcasting it on the speakers. They're all clapping, cheering, excited that he's scamming this lady out of her money. But little did they know, the beekeeper is coming to tear stuff up. Now that Clay's inside and he's dealing with the people, he tells them all to get out because he's setting the building on fire and they better not scam anybody else. Everyone just starts to laugh at him, not take him seriously think that he's playing, but really he's not playing. He ends up starting to beat this one guy because he's sitting there not doing what he asked. Everybody starts to freak out. He pours gas on all the equipment, get ready to set it in flames. And this is when everybody starts to panic and freak out. Now Garnett, the guy that's in charge of the office, ends up approaching Clay, asking him what he's doing. And Clay tells him that you're scamming people. This office is getting shut down. He doesn't want to listen. He has a security try to attack Clay. Clay eliminates all three of them. Boom, 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 takes him out. And now he's got Garnett on the side of the machine. And he basically tells him, let whoever's in charge 
know that this office is going down and he's coming to get the rest of them. The building ends up going up in flames, and once the building goes up in flames, the FBI arrives. This is when Eloise's daughter, Verona, and her partner, Wiley, show up trying to figure out what happened here and why this building was up in flames, and she starts to learn different details as to who came. It was an older truck, what the guy looked like, and things like that. So she's starting to have thoughts of who this person might be. Get it? who this person might be. <laughs> Anyways, he ends up going back to his house and Garnett ends up showing up with three more guys to try and take him out. And they're all loaded up with guns. They go into his shed where he stores all his bee honey and different things, but he's already prepping for them. So he turns on this drill to make noise so that people can't hear him moving around through there. He starts taking them out one by one. Clay ends up getting the first guy attacking him, killing him, Tax the second guy, kills him, Tax the third guy, kills him. And now it's just him and Garnett. He ends up slicing Garnett Garnett's fingers through the machine that has the drill. And once he does this, Garnett starts to give up more information and then he lets Garnett go. When he lets Garnett go, he follows him to this bridge where he's talking to the head, Derek Danforth. And Derek Danforth is trying to figure out what happened, who this beekeeper is, all of these different things that keep happening in this office and why it's being destroyed. Clay jumps out of his truck. He goes and grabs Garnett. He straps Garnett down to this utility belt. He hooks him to the front of his truck, drives him off the bridge. And from there, this is when he gets on the phone with Derek Derek and he tells him like, I'm coming for you. I'm coming to your building. So be aware everything's about to happen now. He ends up finding out more information. The FBI finds Garnett's body. More information is coming out that it's the truck and all of these different things. Verona realizes that the beekeeper is probably the guy that's doing this in justice for her mother's name. Derek ends up enlisting the help of Wallace. Wallace is the former head of the CIA. So he has a lot of information and he knows a lot of different things that can help Derek. But at the same time, he finds out that Derek's dealing with the beekeeper keeper and he wants no parts of it. But because Derek's mom is a very high powered woman, she is the president, he's going to go ahead and help Derek with this problem. He enlists another beekeeper to try and take out Clay. This beekeeper ends up catching Clay at the gas station and when she ends up catching him there, she tries to shoot him with all these different guns, tries to take him out. He ends up overcoming her, whooping her up, sets the whole gas station on flame. FBI arrives again. They try to figure out what happened. Seeing all the things lead up to Mr. Clay again, Clay heads for the Nine Points building in Boston, Massachusetts. When he arrives, at the Nine Points building. The FBI is there. Also, the Special Forces team that Wallace hired to try and stop him. The Special Forces team goes inside and they're trying to protect everybody in the call center and the FBI is outside trying to protect the perimeter. But... Obviously, we know that's not going to stop Jason Statham because this guy is just amazing. And it's crazy to think that he's still as good at these roles in his 50s. And I feel like he could probably play this into his 70s because he's not showing his age. So now when he gets there, the FBI is outside. They're trying to keep him from going inside of the office. But obviously, he takes them all out. But he doesn't kill these guys. They're FBI. So he actually feels they're good guys. He gets past the FBI. He heads into the building. This call center is even more magnificent than the first one because this one has a big screen with money amounts on the screen. The guy running this office is treating it like it's a game show, like the Price is Right or Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. He's in there just shouting out numbers and getting excited for every city that they're scamming these different older people. The people on the phones are getting happy, clapping, doing all this stuff. It's just crazy to think that these centers are like clubs and it's all rah-rah and all these different things. But anyways, we know what's going to happen here. So Jason Statham gets into action. The special forces that were in there were told to go outside of the room by Derek. Jason Statham's there and he's getting ready to tear stuff up. So now he takes the guy that runs this office. He slammed him into the glass, trying to find out information as to what is happening, who's running this outfit. He ends up stapling his head with multiple staples until he finally gives up Derek Danforth's information. Derek ends up retreating to his mom's beach mansion to be able to be protected by the Secret Service so that hopefully Clay can't end up getting him. Obviously, we know that he's going to find him and reach him. He takes off for there. This building's been destroyed. Clay arrives at the beach mansion and Wallace hired these mercenaries that supposedly killed a beekeeper already to try and take out Clay. As he navigates through the beach mansion, he runs across the mercenary, fighting him hand-to-hand -hand combat, beating him up, kicking his leg off, tearing him up, gets past him. Once he gets past him, he gets to the office where the president and Derek are, and Wallace is outside the door trying to convince him not to go in and do anything. But he ends up breaking Wallace's hand. He puts a bomb on the door to be able to blow the lock. He gets inside, and Clay's sitting there holding his mom at gunpoint. And while he's holding his mom there at gunpoint, he gets ready to pull the trigger. Clay shoots him. FBI had arrived. And this is where Verona has a dead shot on Clay, but she has to decide whether she wants to choose justice or if she wants to choose the law. And what it looks like is she's going to choose justice. So once he ends up killing Derek, she lets him escape. He dives out the window, runs to the beach, 
He has a scuba bag that's underneath the sand, puts it on, gets in his gear, and he disappears off into the sunset. The movie ends. Overall, this movie is a good film, especially if you're someone that likes Jason Statham and the action and just his way that he is, his demeanor, his swagger, all of that. Those things always excite me about him. And this was one of his better movies in the past few years. The Expendables, eh, not too good. And then a couple of these other movies that came out in between, not the greatest. But this one, even though it has different elements than you're used to, like him being a beekeeper and the fact that he's fighting against Malaysia, millennials that are coming into wealth and then has to deal with the president. It's actually a fun play on it and there's no parts of this movie where I felt bored. The violence and the action continues throughout the whole entire time you're watching this film. So I recommend watching it. I give it a C plus or a B minus. I would say probably closer to a B minus. This movie was very enjoyable. It wasn't bogged down with a lot of dialogue. The movie flowed quite consistently throughout the time you're watching and a lot of stuff blows up. Who doesn't like things to blow up? What's the last Jason Statham movie that you watched? Was it good? How did you feel about this movie? Let me know in the comments if you like this movie and you have a specific movie title that you want me to review. If you haven't already checked out some of my other reviews, watch my Color Purple review, watch the Wonka review, Aquaman review, or even the Rebel Moon review. Thanks guys, see you later.